So these are some of the, the advantages that you have in, with virtualization. Nowadays, cloud computing is all the rage and hype. Everybody is talking about the cloud, okay? Uh, which is synonymous to, in certain ways, uh, in a majority of uh, the uh, accepted uh, terms that cloud computing cloud computing represents. Uh, Essentially, cloud computing and, and virtualization go hand in hand. Uh, Larry Ellison uh, made it very clear um, in his keynote address at Open World of last year in September that Oracle's understanding and Oracle's strategy and direction as far as cloud computing is very similar, if not 100% identical, to Amazon's cloud computing strategy, which is based on Zen, uh, which which is basically Oracle VM. So virtualization is the foundation stone. It's the foundation for cloud computing as far as Oracle is concerned. And of course, as far as Amazon and other uh, dominant market leaders in the cloud computing space, such as Rackspace, etc., uh, they all share this common, similar um, understanding. So there's para-virtualized guests and there are hardware-virtualized guests. Essentially, para-virtualized guests kind of piggyback off the underlying OS which resides in DOM0, which is your hypervisor or your virtual machine monitor. Uh, and what they use is they directly use this special hyper hypercall ABI to uh, emulate these guest VMs, uh, which, you know, essentially are utilize the different resources such as CPU, memory, I.O., etc. The other type of virtualization is hardware-assisted or full virtualization. So, now, I mentioned that there's three, three uh, families of operating systems that are supported by Oracle VM or Zen, which are Linux, Solaris, and Windows. Out of these three, the para-virtualized para family is Linux because the underlying DOM0 is Linux. The other families, which are basically Windows and Solaris, are hardware virtualized. Now, they sort of emulate para-virtualized. They're not strictly hardware virtualized. Uh, they sort of emulate para-virtualized, so kind of, I call them sort of hybrid virtualization because you actually have to install the para-virtualization drivers so they, they can actually communicate with DOM0. Uh, or the hypervisor. Hardware-assisted virtualization is relatively, again, the term relatively slower than para-virtualization. The advantage that you have is that you can have an unmodified guest OS. That, of course, is strictly up for debate as well because you actually have to uh, install para-virtualized drivers for uh, Windows or Solaris space guest VMs to work. Uh, this is a little bit about the, go ahead. So if I could add one thing to that, just for people listening on the call, uh, the last slide is, is very important. It's uh, very important that you understand uh, the difference between uh, para-virtualization and hardware virtualization. It, it's decreasing, but uh, I think it's important. If When I started learning Rack stuff, I did a lot, I used a lot of virtualization. Um, I use a lot of old hardware to do that, and some hardware just is not capable of. So if you're planning on setting up a test cluster at home, if you have an old PC sitting around, you, if it's older, uh, all the new stuff that's built now has hardware virtualization capabilities, so there's really not a lot of issues if you're buying brand new computers, but I don't always use brand new computers. I have some old computers, and I like to use the old computers, try to get, get, get my use out of them, get my money's worth. And so for old computers, it is important. I could not use Oracle VM on the computer that I, I have at home, which I've done most of my stuff on. I could not use Oracle VM because it does not support hardware virtualization. So uh, the, the processor in that one doesn't. So it is just an important point. Uh, just make sure you understand this if you're planning to, to install a VM, uh, something like this, on one of your computers at home. So just wanted to point that out. Thanks, Jeremy. So as I mentioned earlier, Zen was basically founded at the University of Cambridge. That's where the project began. 
and it is the virtualization base for Amazon EC2. Oracle is part of the Zen Advisory Board along with Citrix, HP, IBM and other market leaders. You can learn more about Zen at zen.org. This is a graphical depiction uh, showing the various components in a Oracle VM infrastructure. At the bottom you will see your x86. Now one thing um, to stress is that what we are using right now is Oracle VM for x86. There is another family of products that Oracle provides. It's called Oracle VM for Spark. And that's more so for uh, uh, logical domains and and basically it, it that focuses on the Spark platform. Whereas what we're doing today, what we're focusing on today is Oracle VM for x86. So as you can see at the bottom of the slide, you have your different physical resources such as CPU, memory, I.O., etc. Uh, at the top you will see your DOM use, uh, which basically sit on your hypervisor. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they use the hypercall API to communicate with the hypervisor for the coordination of the resources such as CPU, memory, uh, etc. Now, one other thing that I want to stress today is we are only using one physical Oracle VM server machine for today's exercise, which essentially also means that we do not have high availability enabled at the Oracle VM uh, layer. So what is high availability with Oracle VM? That's another important subject that I want to touch on briefly. Uh, essentially, I call it Oracle VM clusters. And what it is, is it's a pool of Oracle VM server machines to formulate a single logical uh, machine where you can have guest VMs residing on different VM servers. You can actually perform high availability tasks such as live migration with zero downtime. Uh, I, again, I repeat that with zero downtime. So if you're using Amazon, if you've ever used Amazon uh, machine images, you can actually live migrate your Amazon machine images with maybe like five to ten seconds of disconnect. Uh, and that disconnect is more so at the graphical refresh rate uh, rather than the... Uh, it actually is a physical disconnect, um, but none of your operations get interrupted. So if you're running a query on a database, it will continue running. It will be interrupted for a few seconds depending on the underlying resources that are available in the underlying infrastructure. Uh, but that's what you can achieve. You can actually live migrate uh, your guest VMs within your physical Oracle VM or your physical Zen-based servers. What is required for achieving this high availability or what is required for uh, getting this Oracle VM cluster, as I call it, up and running. The key hardware piece that you need are shared disks. So you need either a iSCSI or an NFS or a NAS. All of these protocols are supported by Oracle VM 100%. Uh, or, or your conventional SANS that you use. Um, so you need your OVS directory which is your Oracle VM shared server directory, needs to be sitting on shared disk. So that if one physical machine actually goes down, like today my physical machine that we're implementing the two node rack cluster, it's actually sitting on a SATA drive. It is not shared. It is not a shared uh, hard drive at all. So that's what you basically need. You need shared storage to implement uh, an Oracle VM cluster. I'm going to quickly switch back and show you the progress. Uh, so right now it's done a lot of stuff and right now what it's doing is copying database files. It's silently running the Oracle Universal Installer or the OUI in the background with the response files, with the associated response files. And as you can see, it's uh, started the Oracle instance. Uh, it already has the grid infrastructure up and running. And what it's doing right now is creating your database view. So let me switch back. Tariq, one quick question about that. Um, sure. It, when you were configuring the script at the very beginning, was there mm -hmm. an option to change the default character set for the database it creates or no? I don't remember. I wasn't watching. 
or I didn't see that. I wasn't it looking. comes. Uh, it comes with uh, a bare bones pared down database called ORCL. Now, once your uh, I'm not 100% sure about the character set that that comes with. Uh, I'm assuming that it will be AL32 UTF, which is the Uni Unicode 32-bit uh, character yeah, set. Yeah, that on the screen right there. Yeah, so that's what it is. But that database is just a pared down, just a, a kickstart database, if you will, that they ship it with. Once your grid infrastructure is up and running, once your clusterware demons are up and running, you can go ahead and create a database of your choice, of your your capacity, whatever you need to do, you can create it on this n number of node virtual cluster. So, so as you saw today, it was it's very very easy to learn Oracle VM. It's mostly point and click, and there's a lot of documentation, a lot of great documentation that's available from Oracle uh, in the Oracle VM space.